That's right, awesome. we are here with the lovely Jamie Soleil again. Um, we would be here with Bryce, but I'm going to give you two options where Bryce is, and you can pick which one you want to believe. She's teaching Donald Trump yoga, because we all know what brilliant yoga teacher she is. Mm -hmm. Got a power cut, and I'll just leave it there. You can decide which option fits for you. But either way, hi Bryce, we miss you. <laughs> but Jamie, you are in lovely circumstances, looking gorgeous, and we are doing well overdue the fourth in our series when we're going through the different advice in the fifth agreement by Don Miguel Ruiz and Don Jose Ruiz, a practical guide to self mastery. But before we dig deep into this, how are you doing? Oh, another, another loaded question. We just were chatting off camera here, catching up a little bit. It's been a month, hasn't it? It's, been, it's just, you know, it's such a mind, you know what, yeah. I just, yeah. I'm kind of, like everybody else, I'm sure I'm just so tired of it. I just enough already. Um, but I am, what I am doing is I'm definitely not, you know, I follow my favorites, obviously, but I've just sort of disconnected to the internet and I've gone more internet. And, um, you know, obviously I'm doing more writing, uh, more meditation, just more quiet time, uh, more grounding, which is what we're, so they're saying the spiritual people are saying we should be doing right now. So it, it does help. It's hard though, Catherine. I mean, how are you doing with all of this? Because I know that you're more engaged with other people that are in this, in, like speaking out on these platforms. Like, how are you feeling with, with everything? I'm feeling, I really get why it's taking so long because what I'm really feeling, I think I touched on it three weeks ago when we had our last one of these shows with Bryce that I feel as a person I'm transitioning so much and a lot of the stuff that I've known about intellectually research done a little bit of is really embedding in me now and what I've really come to realize myself is that I'm not going to be drawn into this gossiping this slander the drama because someone said to me about 10 years ago and I just didn't get it at the time well I sort of got it but I didn't want to get it <laughs> be careful in life that you're not an arsonist firefighter so do you far start the fires yourself in your life metaphorically so yeah. that you can prove how capable you are to put them out because yeah. I was caught in that um cycle of achievement is what what it was for me and I really this week that has clicked and come back to me Casey mm -hmm. you know who you are you say that to me and I thought that is so right because we spoke last time um about you know the drama and people being addicted to drama and I could see how I'd been caught in that pattern and how easy it is when you've got a need to fit in mm -hmm. to want to agree with your good friends about things to want to um do that and actually sometimes you have to just step back and just say actually no I, I'm really not with you on that um and I really feel I'm at that stage with all of it so even though a lot of people I'm still really good friends with it doesn't mean we're on the same page about what we're necessarily talking about yeah no you just have to like I found that it's just really emotionally draining yeah, and, you know, as much as I'm excited to follow certain things and I specific things resonate with me, it's still, it still just messes with me. And we, we agreed off camera too, that, you know what, even when we think something is a certain way or the truth or whatever, it's, we know too, that they're not going to necessarily put out exactly what is the truth because they're still dealing with some of this evil out there and they, they don't want everybody to know everything. Completely. When you're going through things like that, you have to protect that information because otherwise it can be pushed off track, as we've seen yeah. so easily. And so I, I feel I feel I've grown up a lot over the last six months. Aww, I think right. I yeah, I think everybody's grown in this and we've gone through a lot of very difficult like adversity. It's been like a roller coaster for me. I have days where I'm like on cloud nine because I just feel so grateful to be here for, you know, to witness all of this. And then other days I've, I cry for two days straight and I just, I don't want to be here. Like I have such a, yeah, it's just, and, and so what I'm trying to do is just stay really connected to like my, my like-minded friends and 
positive things we got to keep our vibration high and I, I and I'm kind of like that's where I always lived but it's like now that we're hearing it all the time I go I'm sick of hearing this you know but I used to always be that way yeah it's just you now we have to keep reinforcing it because there's so much negativity out there and things trying to pull us in different directions and distract us and and it brings us down and anyway I'm just like where can we go Catherine where <laughs> Yeah, and I think so today. Let's so, so today I'll put my late, late at night here, hence the weird lighting and everything. Today, the fourth agreement is always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you're healthy as opposed to sick. Yep. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self judgment, self abuse, and regret. So, for example, I went to this weekend a beautiful event. It was called the Community Festival, and it was run by Russell Brand and Wim Hof. And I'm such a big Wim Hof fan. And I tell you what, there's not that many people where you meet them in person and they're just better than you've even anticipated. And he is one of those people, the most gorgeous man. Oh, my God, the comments about how dark Russell Brand is and things like this. And I'm like, you weren't there. You don't know. I, I went mainly because I wanted to see Wim Hof. I was intrigued to meet Russell Brand face to face. It was the most beautiful event for me. There were other people there that didn't feel that. For me and my husband, we had the most amazing time. It was a beautiful event. The atmosphere was wonderful. I heard what they said. I saw how they acted and I will make my perception on that. And just because someone's had a photograph of this or been managed to a certain person, I'm sure lots of people have been through different stages in their life. I don't know what he's done in his past and I really don't care. I know that he put on a festival. It was all about living your truth, about being your authentic self and changing the world. And I had the time of my life there and I am very grateful for that. And, and people trying to convince me otherwise and send me photos and everything, you know, don't waste your time because everyone evolves you know we took we spoke about this last time and we're all trying to do the best we can yeah the information we've got and we'll cock up we'll fall over we'll yeah. change our minds we'll get new information and we'll move on well we're going through a very confusing time right now too i mean we're learning that we've been lied to from about most things in our life right so we always we always say when we know better we do better yeah now we're still going through the purging of the old belief systems and the old stories. And so now I'm going, well, what is that when we know better, when we know, like, cause we were laughing the other day about um, avocados are really good. Like they're really good for you. And they're this and they're this and they're this. And I'm like, well, next month it'll be all oh, there. They're, they're really bad for you. Don't eat them too much. Like it just, everything keeps changing. So I'm like, I don't really know when you know better, like, what is it? <laughs> right. Exactly. So Hard, but I, I've always told like my parents um, raised me uh, my parents divorced when I was 10 but as an adult they would always talk to me about guilt and how they had guilt with the way that they raised my brother and I and the things that they did or the things they said or didn't do and I used to say to them like you guys you did the best you could with what you knew with where you were at right like we always have to remind ourselves of that in like you just read in, in the beginning and the back of the book there we don't beat ourselves up. Like, yeah, maybe our best sometimes sucks to yeah. others or even to ourselves. We can go, that wasn't great. But at that time, we were only behaving and projecting our best at that time. And now the most important thing as an athlete that I've learned is maybe my best wasn't awesome right there, but what, what can I learn from that experience? That's all I ever did that got me to the top. It wasn't about like, oh, I was terrible or oh this or beating myself up. I don't, I don't even know what guilt feels like because even another example right now is with my son and him not being in my life right now for almost nine months. And I could sit here and feel guilty and oh, I could have done this and I could have done that, but I'm doing the best that I can. I send him love. I, I speak to him. My higher self speaks to his, like I'm doing everything I can because that's where I'm at right now because I'm also healing. Exactly. Right. So I'm doing the best I can in this moment right today. Tomorrow might suck and tomorrow might even be more, even better. But that's kind of what I always tell myself that, you know, unless you're purposefully doing something to hurt someone, like if you're coming from fear, which is, you know, this whole thing has been about, 
or you're coming from love, right? Like where are you making your decisions from? Where are you coming from? Heart-centered, right? Or fear-based? It's so important. And I think we sort of know that, you know, most people make a lot of their decisions from fear-based and we know the reasons why. But once you know the reasons why and you recognize that, then you can take steps to correct it and everything. And we spoke last time, funny enough, I listened to it when I was doing the animals tonight because I wanted to remind ourselves. And I was like, God, there's so much wisdom in this book. It's so simple, a lot of the advice, but there's so much wisdom there because the whole point is you are meant to learn from the journey and you are meant to enjoy the journey. I mean, we joke as parents, my husband and I were like, we're going to have made so many cock ups. We just need to set up a counseling fund for them, <laughs> you know, um, because you are. And, and you, when do you ever feel ready to have children? When do you ever feel ready to have a dog? You know, I mean, the responsibility is huge, but you learn as you go along. And what I'm finding is this great awakening, as we call it, spiritual evolution, everyone's talking about ascension. You can't ascend in any aspect of your life, whether you believe in the actual ascension journey or you just move from moving forward, if you're not prepared to be really honest with yourself mm -hmm. and if you're not doing your best. Because you know, only you really know whether you gave your best in any particular situation, whether it's listening to a friend or competing in the Olympics, you know, no one else can answer that question for you, but you cannot lie to yourself. So if you lie to yourself, it's going to come back big time and bite you in the butt. It's a tough one because I'm sitting here thinking my brain's like going like a hamster in, in, the, in the wheel there right now. Like I think of there was days when I was an athlete where Catherine, I just couldn't get out of bed. Mm. You know, so tired or so sore. And I guess for me at that time, it was like, well, my best today is going to be just be showing up at the rink. Yeah. And, you know, people would look around and go, wow, she's just phoning it in today, you know, whatever. But I just remember going, I'm, I got here and I'm not proud of my performance today, but, or, you know, just what I could even do. But I, I made myself go because that was my commitment, right? Yeah. That was, that's what I committed to. So it wasn't, I didn't expect myself to be a champion that day. It was just like, these are the days that matter the most. But, but there are people that are really struggling today right now with all of this. And so there's been, I'm sure you have listeners even that are struggling getting out of bed every day, just because mm -hmm. I've had that. So recognize that you're going through a lot. We're purging, everything's coming to the surface. Like, I guess I'm just relating this to what we're going through today because it's so, it's so difficult and I'm struggling actually too. But it's like some days just actually getting clothes on is a win for me. Yeah and making myself lunch or whatever. And I just, so naturally want to beat ourselves up and go, well, that wasn't a productive day, but it's like, well, no, I started my day off feeling really crappy and I got to myself to a certain point. So it's really for me, for me personally, not being hard on yourself about your best isn't great that moment or that day, but it's like, you know what? I continue to keep moving. Yeah. And, Cause right now we can't quit. Yeah. And, and I guess that's ingrained in me. It was, I was born with this and as an athlete, but it's, you cannot quit. You know, that was how, so for me, that's me doing my best, not quitting. <laughs> Too right. And I think, you know, they say it so beautifully in the book, where it's, you know, your best will be very every single day based on where you are. Um, and, and that's so, so important that you're, all you're comparing yourself to is you and you know what starting point you're at each and every day. And that will vary. Well, for me, it doesn't just vary each day. It can vary multiple times within the day. Um, so, you know, I can be up, I can be down and we can, we can blame it on so much, but there's no need to. Sometimes I think that over analysis is so damaging to yourself. And, and I think even where we're seeing at the moment where we're seeing a lot of division even in the current you know so things you've got to realize that everyone's got their reasons and we're not inside their heads and we don't know where they're coming from with all these things on both sides of the argument and sometimes it's not our battle to have and and what I think is it's so easy to get drawn into these these dramas like we spoke about last time whether it's um certain people have fallen out or whether it's um, you've heard a bit of news and you're taking it as fact and then you suddenly, you know, you might realise a month later that it's not at all. Yes. Whatever it is, 
Um, you sometimes I think it's like being really careful to pick your battles. And are you choosing to step into a boxing ring that you just don't need to step in there? You know, just keep out. <laughs> it's all right to be a spectator at times and not get involved. Well, this is kind of why I didn't want to do the the my own video, my own show. <laughs> yeah. I like being on your shows because I'm like, I don't want to create, I don't want to, not that I'm going to create, create it necessarily, but I didn't want to necessarily get involved in anything that would be like push and pull and tough because it's, I'm already going through so much. Yeah. I'm grieving a lot. We're all grieving a lot about discovering things and being lied to. And then we're going through, you know, grieving, losing family or friends and all this. And I've got a son that won't talk to me. I've got everyone coming out, like even people like I loved you when you skated, but I think you're the worst human being right now. But I also get the opposite. I loved you yeah. when you skated, but I think you're even better now. I get both, but it's just like, you know, I'm just, a, I'm just a, another human being here and I am all love. I am heart centered person. So to see that people are throwing daggers at me is like so incredibly painful. Um, but I've got you guys, an, an incredible support group around me. We all know that we just have to keep going. Yeah. But yeah. My, I just, I struggle some days at what my best, even when I'm responding to something like I know better not to be reactive. Yeah. So when somebody comes at you with something like a narcissist, let's say, cause we're dealing with that everywhere, you know, it's hard. My best, my best would be like, okay, you know, remember what the book says, remember, don't take it personally. Don't make assumptions, don't this, whatever. But I just, I have to constantly have that conversation in my head, Catherine, because it's just so much work. Yeah. I want to be reactive. I want to defend myself. I want to stand up for myself, but that doesn't, that's, I mean, I'm not saying that's not my best because we're, we don't want to be contradictory here. You are your best in that moment, but, but it's like, you're having this conversation going, okay, what would be the best response right now or the best way to, to handle this right now? I'm like, I don't know. I just don't feel like I, I don't know. I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah, and I, I get you completely. Very lost. I feel very confused. I feel hurt. I feel a lot of different emotions. Do I do, so get you. And I think, um, do you think part of it is it keeps coming back to me that we're so taught to spend so much of our life in our headspace that we yeah. have to think so much of these things. And again, it's like, your true friends you can have honest conversations with and like we keep saying agree to disagree yes. but how many people I think the sad reality is most of us are realizing we've got very few true friends in our lives because there's very few people that we can have that relationship with or is that just me <laughs> perhaps it's just me but uh, I've really come to that relationship that realization and I'm just like okay so if I'm going to be my best, that's also got to accept that I'm not responsible all the time for how other people feel as well. Oh, yes. So my best, if I'm doing my best, and then if other people have got a different perception of that or a different perception where I am, then I can't change that. I cannot change that because they'll be viewing their work, me through their lens. And I think doing your best you know I know I can think of situations where I think I haven't done my best and I know that and then a lot of times when things haven't gone as I've wanted them to I actually know that I really did do my best and I really did do that and actually when you reflect back on that it's much easier to handle those situations when you can authentically say did the best I could if that wasn't good enough or whatever then not my you know I need to let that go well and and also what worked for me too with skating even coaching um you know being a motivational coach was what is your why yeah why, what is your why in all of this in life with as a you know what are your goals and so you know my 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 purpose or my my why or my passion or my goals right now is really about being light you know and so sometimes when, like we know that we're having our moments where like I literally want to scream and yell at people who are still sleeping and just be like, oh my, like, you know, you're holding us, but like, I just, it's all the shaming comes up, right? And then I have to catch myself and go, no, again, they're doing their best. 
with, with what they know and where they're at, which is really, really challenging for me because I'm around a lot of sleepers yeah. and I can't understand why, how they can't even see it. But I, I do understand more too, that it's more of a psychological, they just can't admit it now, right? Like they, it's denial, but again, it's just, they're doing their best. And I remember one day saying to my mom, I'm like, I was, just, I was screaming at her, I'm not screaming, but I was really emotional and I was loud. And I just said like, your best sucks right now because I felt so abandoned and so hurt, so betrayed. And because no one in my family had my, has my back. Mm. And I'm like, you as my mother, I'm like, your best sucks. <laughs> just can't yeah. do it. And of course I, I explained myself later and I said, mom, I know you're doing your best. But you know, as my mom, I go, I just, I guess I expected more for, about for certain things. And she admitted, she goes, you know what? She goes, I'm just being a chicken shit. And I go, so if, when are you going to not be a chicken shit? When I get dragged off to a concentration camp? Yeah. Is that you're gonna stop? Like, so now again, you don't want to ridicule and shame them. Are you doing your best? Cause your, your best sucks. That's not right. But, but me saying something kind of woke her up and I was like, yeah. Like mom, you know, I can't, I, I couldn't go to restaurants for seven months. I, ca I can't get in an airplane. And she just was like, well, we know it's not right. And I said, okay, so, you know, are you going to start like just speaking out, speaking out to your family and friends, even about that? Because I don't expect anybody to get on the, on rooftops or on platforms like this and, and yell and scream at people. We don't need to do that. But I said, and I don't expect you to create a Twitter page like I have, but start talking start talking to your family. They're all sleeping. Like that, that was all I was trying to say to her, but I'm like, what yeah. is this going to take for Pete's sake? Like, so that wasn't right of me, but at the same time, it woke her up to realize that like, she's just sitting back purposefully going, well, I just don't want to ruffle any feathers. You know, I just don't want to, where really she wasn't standing in her truth. Right. So what's your, why What I'm standing in my truth. I want to help people. I want to be light right now. I want to send love to everybody even if they hate me. So I'm doing that way. I feel like I'm doing my best, but yeah. Yeah. It's a really good point. You raise that about, you know, sort of as a mother, you know, that you do have to have difficult conversations with your children. And that means our mothers need to have difficult conversations with us. And it's funny how people are on different journeys. I mean, everyone, if we all believe that we all create our own reality, if people watching this believe this, we can't be selective as to what reality we think. We've got to take it the good, the bad and the ugly. And sometimes that's really hard to take. Yeah. You hit on something very importantly a minute ago about when you were training, it's like, well, what have I learned from this on the days yeah. when they aren't? And I think that's really important for people because at the end of the day, you know, when we all go to sleep at night, you've got yourself to deal with and you know whether you're proud of how you've lived that particular day and yep. what have you learned and, and what do you want to change? Because we're all going to want to change things about ourselves because we always know that we, we can improve in all aspects of our relationships. Yeah. So I have to tell you what I used to do when I was training, I had a logbook. And I would always write down, like, I had my yearly goal where I wanted to be at the end of the year and obviously the monthly goals. And they would change because sometimes you accomplish something quicker than you expected. But, um, and then I would have my daily stuff and, and we had our program elements laid out on the paper and we would check mark or X if we executed them or missed them. So every day, it wasn't just like we did it for fun, like just do that and who cares not look at it, close the book next day, whatever. No, every day I would look at it and go, okay, well, well, not maybe every day, but every other day, every three days, you kind of go, well, I've missed the same jump now three, four days in a row. What is it that I need to do differently? Like, wh why is this happening? That's just an example for an athlete when you're yeah. dealing with specific elements and you want to be the best and you, you're, you know, you're shooting for the stars, but it can be the same for us too, that are, you know, going to work every day or, or stay-at-home moms, whatever it is, because I'm a stay-at-home mom now. And it, I mean, I'm not asking you to write down all your, all your uh, things you got to do in a day per se, but it's like when you're, when you're going through things, difficult time, or even just day-to-day -day tasks, it's really about that learning. It's like having that assessment, reevaluating. okay, well, this, I continue to get the same results in this. Why? What is it that I'm doing 
uh, wrong or what is it that I need to do differently? Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? I completely get it. And what fascinates me in that is how easily judgmental most people are. So we expect everyone in a position of power or everyone this to do their best. But why are we expecting other people to do something if we're not holding those standards to ourselves? It doesn't matter what your role is in life, job is, what age you are, um, what your own individual goals are, so long as you're doing your best. Because if you're doing the best you can to be the best human you are, then that's great that you can expect. If, you, if, if we believe that we are all connected mm -hmm. in some way, that we are all energy beings and we're all connected, if we're choosing consciously or subconsciously not to do our best in any area of our life, and, and best isn't achievement, by the way, that I'm not talking about achievement, I'm talking about being the best human you can be with the tools that you've got. If we're not putting that effort in, so to speak, or that intention might be a better word, mm -hmm. then what do we think that's creating in our reality? Mm -hmm. Very everything good. that ripple effect will go on everything else and then we can sit there and blame other people for making mistakes or decisions and things that we don't like but you know yeah. it's the thing you've got to hold that mirror up first well it's like i said the intention or like your why you know what's your yes. what's, yeah no and that it's funny because i i didn't realize how connected my sport mm. the way i handled my sport the way i i um I lived being an athlete, how much it resonates and is so real in my, my life today as a mom and a friend and a family member, whatever. Um, it's, it's very much the same stuff. It's the same ingredients. Everyone's like, what's the secret to success? <laughs> like, there's no secret. It's everybody's way there. And what is success for you? Exactly. You know? um, success for me is nothing like what I thought success for me was when I was 18, you know, it is. No, and it changes because you've realized that when you're younger, everyone thinks that success is all about like, you know, winning something, making lots of money and having things. So that's not success for me right now, especially going through all this. It's like success is all about keeping everybody happy and feeling loved and safe. And right. Like I'm successful in my mind. Yeah. I, right. Stay positive. <laughs> yeah. And having choices for me is really, really important, which is why I'm such a big advocate for the animals, because, you know, when you realize what taking a choice is away from any sentient being does and how much stress that causes, then, you know, you realize how much we do that every day to our animals. And, and that, that saying love is blind, but, you know, it's a really interesting one when, for me, when I was thinking about what is doing your best, it's keeping that open inquiring mind and that humility that you can always learn more. You can always find better ways of doing things. And there's a big difference between doing that with a, a feeling of humility to judging mm -hmm. yourself. There's very different energy behind it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree with that. No, I'm pretty good at not judging myself. I mean, we get down and you feel kind of like, oh, like you said earlier, you know, maybe I didn't do my best today. There's been times where I know I didn't do my best, but it's not about beating yourself up because that's not what, in my mind, a champion, again, is not about the medal. You know, a champion in life is someone who's just always looking for the good in things and, and the gift, because we know that even through all of this awakening for me, I've, I've had a lot of loss. I, I don't like the word loss because I see it as transition. I mm -hmm. know that there's been so many beautiful gifts that have shown up for me over the last seven months. Like it's still difficult for me, but I've got, I've reconnected with old friends and I've, you know, it's just, I've had so many gifts, but that's what I've always done in my life. It's like when I'm going through something difficult, the, the gift isn't always right there in front of you, but you have to trust that. Yeah. And whether it's having faith in God or it's in yourself or whatever it is for you, but it's really trusting that there is a gift in this. And, um, you know, and, and, and I've even had clients where they've literally lost a love, like a child or a, a family member. And it's like, well, obviously that's a really difficult thing to go. Where's the gift in losing my child. Um, but I've seen people get to that place and overcome that pain. Right. And move through this with grace yeah. and dignity. And that to me is doing their best. That's their best. 
you know, but we tend to, what I've tended to, I've done in the past at times, I don't tend to do this all the time, but I've done this where you sit in that victimization state mm. a bit too long. And that's where you can say, you know what, that's not really my best. Cause that's not who you are. That's not what we're meant to be doing as these sentient beings either, right? Is be beating ourselves up and being playing victims and whatever. Like that's to me programming. But um, you should feel bad. You should, you should, you should. We're shooting all over the place. But um, I think just really recognizing that, you know, that in that day, in that moment, in that time with whoever you're with or whatever you're doing, you are doing your best. Yeah, I think what you touched on there with trust is really such a biggie because when you in your heart know that you've done the best in whatever situation it is, it's much easier, don't you find, to step into that trust that the universe is working for you, not against you. Whilst when you know deep down that you haven't done your best, then of course you're not going to trust what's coming because it's not coming from the right place. So we talk a lot about about trust and about the the, the universe is working for you and and if you're taking this on board to always do your best and be happy whatever that is you know if you've got a really bad last week I had a really bad headache and I had to cancel a couple of meetings mm. and um but I didn't feel bad about it because I knew that if I'd have gone into those consults feeling not great I knew I couldn't give my best and that, that would have been more unfair on my clients than it would have been to actually actually said no actually I really can't I can't give my best to you today can we reschedule well this is Catherine that's it so doing your best is maybe just standing being in your truth yeah of that moment that time you just you're in your truth and you're owning it whether it's a, a sad emotion or it's a celebrate celebratory emotion you're just being in your truth at that moment maybe an, I don't know that just came to me right now it's like yeah being in your truth being authentic being real and being true to yourself where you're at I think that's just the crux of it all for me honor it like when I'm crying right now not right now yeah lately, like people feel bad and my daughter goes mom I just so hard for me when you cry and I say you know what it's okay because stuff needs to come up to go out I said, it, it, this is totally okay. It's part of the process. And I said, and from this, I get stronger. Yeah. So, you know, just wait, you know, and that's, and that's not even like me just filling her or other people around me with BS. Like I actually truly believe that. And I'm allowing myself to cry and be sad, you know, and then I allow myself even to be angry at certain things, but I don't need to be reactive. So my best in that moment is, okay, I'm angry and I'm so mad with somebody. I want to text them what I really think right now, which is my truth. Yes, but I don't because I know it's more damaging. So it's just it's the lessons you be in your truth, but and knowing what your why is or what your purpose is, what your what what was it that you called it, your intention, like what yeah. was your intention, right? Oh man, we could like go in circles but with all. This. We this could is- go in circles, and I think self awareness is is key. I think I yes. become a lot more self aware. I mean, it's actually sort of being doing videos, which was my worst nightmare when I started off doing it, but my curiosity overrode my fear sort of thing. But actually it's a really good lesson in self-awareness because I don't often listen back, but when you do, you learn so much about yourself that you weren't aware of. And it is important because the more aware you are of yourself, then the more you've got choices about how you react and how you can create and move out of that state of reaction into a place of creation which is where the beauty lies of it all and it isn't easy you know some days I find it really easy and other days I find it really really hard but what I do realize is a lot of the times when I find it really hard I can trace it back to decisions I've made the day before have I stayed up too late have I eaten bad food have I been listening to stuff that I know triggers me yeah you know, um which you know I'm sure we all do I'm sure we all do and it's that that self-punishment and you know why is my husband just says well just turn it off yeah well, really again that's it just turn it off if it's provoking that reaction in you turn it off and then I laugh and think oh yeah good point <laughs> that's simple yeah. not that I'd ever admit to him he's right of course <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a step too far that's a lesson for my next life yeah. 
yeah. on now. I've got to be realistic. Um, but yeah, I, th I think also you and I always say it's about having fun about it and, and having these conversations to me, as I said, this book I've had for years and each time I pick it up to read it, I just get completely new stuff and it just goes deeper. And isn't it so true that so much in life, it's the simple things that are really so important. We don't have to overcomplicate things all the time. Oh, it's, it's not complicated. And that's why I like his books because it, I'm not reading them having to really use my brain. Like not, that sounds terrible in it's some true. way, but it's true. Cause I hate reading things where I got to really think and I got to like analyze it and I got to let it, whatever I just, I read and his books are, yes, they're, they're repetitive. Like I, I brought one today, Catherine, cause I'm traveling with this one right now. Um, the mastery of self. And it's very, very similar. It's the same kind of, like he always brings the same messaging into all his books. And again, for me, it's just reaffirming. It just kind yeah. of like, but you're right. You do have to keep on, like read them once a year or whatever, how often you need to, but you know, okay. So in this one though, it offers us the tools to break free from the chains of suffering, including the toughest chains to break the ones we have created for ourselves. So this is the biggest thing that I'm realizing right now is that a lot of people I'm dealing with in my life don't want to take responsibility for their actions or where we're at today. And that's where I, I do struggle with that because I'm like, I'm sitting here owning all my caca and my mistakes or my, I call them must takes because we got to take those, we got to go through those experiences to learn. But, um, and I can sit there and go, listen, I wasn't perfect. I've done this. I can own that. So I'm really proud of myself for that, but that's what I'm struggling with is like, we, we create, we're creating all of these. Well, I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry, but. Well, yeah, you were saying it really resonates with me because when other people aren't taking responsibility yeah. for their stuff, but I had this exact conversation with myself, <laughs> but then I thought, oh, bugger, but I'm attracting that into my life. Again, why are we attracting these people? Oh that it keeps okay. giving us this message to learn to learn to get learn. Up to the next level of mastery at dealing with it yes and I also have even said okay well you thought you were at this place of healing or you've done all this work but then you attracted this person into your life that's of of a lower vibration but you must have been at that vibration too somewhere and it was through tra my trauma yeah I hadn't healed my trauma. Yeah. Okay. I do lots of goal setting and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, but I hadn't healed the deeper wounds. Right. So I was attracting people at that same frequency, not that they're way below me or way above me. It's just frequency. We'll use that instead. Yeah, completely. It's not a better or worse. It's just oh. where you're at and being honest. And that's so funny. Every time I speak to you, it's like, it's exactly what I've come to the realization. I can sit there and sort of say, well, why this, why that? And it's proved to me because since I've been doing this work, the clients that I've been attracting have just been a completely different level and amazing because I'm at a different frequency and therefore I'm attracting people that want to work with me who are of a matching frequency. And suddenly a lot of the problems have gone away. So now I have to keep reminding myself again, not going to admit it to my husband, but I do joke about that. I sometimes do, but not always. But, you know, I have to keep reminding myself, I can't pick and choose and say I attracted that into my life, but not that. You attracted everything. I attracted and, all of it. And I think it's totally to learn lessons. We're, aren't yeah. we here to learn? We're here to learn. You know, and it's not about shaming yourself. Well, I made a bad choice in that first marriage or in that relationship or with whatever. It's not about that. It's like, okay, instead of blaming that person for what they've done or whatever, again, the accountability here is like, okay, what have I learned about myself in this? Yeah, exactly. And, and if I've attracted it again, obviously I haven't learned it properly yet. So they're going to keep sending it to me until I learn that lesson are going to keep sending it to me I know and I say it a lot of people I know right now are taking their their caca from this pile to the next pile yeah and they'll just doing it until they learn totally so, I don't think that at all a lot and I'm sort of wondering now you've you've made me think about something that has been in my subconscious not there it's like you know we've talked again about it's all about our own self-development and all the while we're focused on other people 
it's taking the diversion away from ourselves, isn't it? And and again, all these sayings that people said to me years ago that I just didn't get at the time are now starting to click in place. And, you know, someone's saying to me, the true meaning of mind your own business is like, you look after your life and everything else will be okay. It's not meant in a mind your own business sort of way. It's meant from the heart in terms of when you mind yourself and look after yourself, then these other things don't come into your life. And well, people it's that are not really true. <laughs> well, and when everyone's got their business, their like their um, energy in other people's business, I would like to sit back and analyze that and go, okay, well, why is it that this person feels that they need to be always in everybody else's stuff? Because they don't want to look in the mirror. Exactly. Oh, you know? and and they don't want to do the work. Whereas like for me, I don't feel like I need to be in anybody else's business. Like, you know, us, girl, us girls always are texting things and it's like, you know, we've talked about this, you, me and Bryce. And it's like, we can say, you know what? We support you. We love you, each other, whatever. Or I mean, maybe this isn't the best example, but, um, but I've gotten, you know, friends even like that have wanted to bring me into things. And I'm just like, you know what? I can love you from over here and I'm here if you need me, but I don't want to get involved in that. That's exactly you know, I'm going through my own stuff. And I just, I know that I've got family members too, that have really um, been very judgmental since uh, for a long time. Oh, and yeah. I've always, me too. Well, no, but even like backstabbing, like, you know, you'll yeah. be, you'll be with her and she'll be so nice to you or he, and then all of a sudden you're gone. And it's like blah, 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 about Catherine. And I don't like that. Right. So I've always said like, why do people behave this way and it's like well because there's a inner pain right so if I talk about others and they and criticize them about what they're doing or saying or being or whatever then it makes me feel better about who I am and my mom used to say that to me and I'm really noticing that right now with all of this it's like going through all these relationship transitions in my life like it's just incredible um how I've been so criticized and and yet I'm sitting here so I'm still standing yeah. um I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a bigot. I'm not all these names that I was called and I'm totally fine. <laughs> and there's still no accountability. There's still no, Hey, I'm very sorry for the things that I've said to you or accused you of or whatever. I just, but again, it's not my business. That's where they're at. And, and deep down, we know it's wounds. Cause I've had the same and the things I've had said to me are just, I'm laughing cause they're so awful um but at the same time hurt people hurt people, hurt people. and mm -hmm. I despite everything that's going on I've never felt more on purpose or more comfortable to be speaking my truth because I've realized it is just my truth it's not their truth it's not their truth but I am um, unapologetically speaking my truth and there's a reason for why we do that and and you don't have to have other one to believe you know to believe you but what I don't want to do is sit there on my deathbed and think god if I'd have actually spoken up I could have saved someone from this or helped them make a better decision because I've been very grateful at times for people that have put their necks on the line and given me the information that I needed at that time that's a good point, Catherine, that's happening right now. And maybe it's not about doing your best, right? Or, I don't know, maybe it is too. But I just recently, like I've, I've actually uh, publicly said the few people that got me, gave me the confidence to start speaking out. Um, and they're, they're local here in Canada. And I saw that they were being very vocal. This was like back in January when I got told it's go time. And I, call, and I thanked them publicly. I was like, it's because of so-and-so and, and like three people. And then now recently there's this baseball player here in Canada that's turned down a $250,000 contract because he's not vaccinated. And I just tell everybody, I go, see, this is what it takes. It takes that one brave person to stand up and say, listen, Canada doesn't get to decide or the UK doesn't get to decide what I put in my body. Exactly. And then now you're going to watch, you're going to see all these other people. Cause that's what it took for me. And I'm okay with that. I don't think that's being a follower. I just exactly. think that you know, this, we're going through a really horrific time of censoring and shaming where it's like you lose everything if you say anything and so when one athlete does it or one person on a platform does it or one person in the business does it like wherever you are then everyone's like okay, yeah like it's the ball rolling and you're right like I don't want to be on my deathbed one day going like I could have done more 
I could have said more. I could have helped more people. Yeah, and I think that's it. And I think, you know, coming back, circling back <laughs> in our way to uh, doing your best, I think it's like, for me, you know, first thing in the morning, my morning routine and my evening routine are quite important. And I always involve a lot of gratitude. And I'm really grateful that I'm much more self-aware as a person than I was a year ago. And I hope tomorrow I'll be more self-aware again. And I'm also very grateful for my honest friends in my life, like you, where, and Bryce and, and other people uh, that, that know who they are, where you know that you can give someone, can give you some honest feedback and you know it's coming from the right place. And I am really, really grateful for those people in my life because we cannot see, we've all got our blind spots yeah. and therefore you've got to have someone like you, your example with you and your mum, you, you did that because you could see there was some inner turmoil with her but, uh, that, you know, because you know, you, you know, when you go to bed in the evening, you think, oh, I'm not really proud that I didn't really stand up for that. You know, we've all had things. It's like, you know, have you ever driven a long road and you've seen an animal that's been hit by a car and you didn't stop? You know, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about cat or dog, not that it makes difference, but how often do people see a bird or, or something like that? Did anything. And that awful feeling when you're just thinking, oh my God. And sometimes it's very dangerous to stop and, you know, you've just got to find a safe place but we all know that feeling deep down what it feels like when you think oh I should have done better and mm. that's the difference is when you've got that self-awareness you don't then go back and beat yourself up but you say next time I will do better mm -hmm. exactly yeah again um, back, back to doing your best is really about learning lessons and how can I become a better version of myself what have I learned you know you might have goals or aspirations or whatever in life and if you're not accomplishing them it's it's about reevaluating what your goals are it's not about i hate when i hear people go well um i'm not sure that's attainable i was told my whole life i would never be a, a champion i was told my whole life and it wasn't because i was lacking talent it was just like well you're from red deer alberta canada yeah. like come on like and you don't have any money your family has no money like there were all these challenges that i was and i'm like don't tell me i can't do something or that that's not possible but it's more about just reassessing like, well, what am I doing that I keep making these same, I'm, I'm in this, I'm stuck. I'm in the same thing all the time. Like, what do I need to change? And sometimes it's as simple as what you're listening to, like we're talking about, what you're following, what you're, what you're watching, what you're reading. Yeah. It's, it's not complicated. It really isn't that complicated. And when you do realize that you're attracting these things into your life, Give yourself a massive pat on the back because once that's clicked, then you can do something about it. You can't do anything about it when you're not aware of it. Yeah. So it's really, really just rewarding yourself for those little steps forward. Yeah. Um, it's it's really, really important. So I love this book. I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's like so, so useful at whatever stage you're at. I think, you know, there's there's no one that's moved past this. It doesn't matter whether you're picking it up for the first time or the 20th time, you're still going to get something out of it because there's little okay. reminders are priceless. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie. I love it. I said the Jamie then. Okay. <laughs> I my this Jamie. My favorite, Jamie. Kathy, yeah. I, just, I want to take this opportunity on your platform to tell you how proud I am of you. And I've watched you not, maybe not from when you first started, but I, I've watched you for a long time now for at least a year and you have grown a lot. And I just, I can see that you're radiating such a beautiful aura and you were even from the beginning, but you've really, you've really evolved. Um, you're helping and reaching so many people. Like I'm, I am personally incredibly grateful for you. Oh, and of course, all so of our friends that do this too, but I'm with you right now. So I'm speaking to you and I, I get emotional because I'm so grateful for people like you. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Big hugs and back at you. And this sends out to everyone that's watching this because we're all on this journey together. And I just don't know who to trust anymore. So I'm like, I oh, know, I know. Nice and like my certain people. I, and yeah, so you better not be. <laughs> I'm not, even though I've got my little broomstick up there. 
yeah. it's really good broomstick. It's for a good witch. So, yeah, um, no, I just think it's brilliant and big, big hugs. And um, hopefully we can see each other soon as well. Oh, man, that would be so great. Yeah. I'll come over on my dragon. Oh, Mitzi, now this is brilliant. This is really good luck. This is my cat, Mitzi, and she's the only one we shut in at night. And she's come to put herself to bed. Hi. Knows that we'll be out looking oh, for cat lover. I love my cat, Catherine. I love my cat. Oh. This is my latest little one from Romania. She is the most gorgeous little darling. Beautiful. Fluffy Duffy sent us, her to us. And she's just adorable. She is just such a great friend so look she's don't you touch my tail but yeah you're a little kitty so thank you so much everyone to watching i hope you've enjoyed it please do let us know in the comments before your thoughts on this we really love reading them because we're all learning from each other and as you can see from our conversation today it's a constant evolving process um be quite good to come back in a year time wouldn't it and revisit it it would be really interesting i'll do it yeah Big hugs. Have a lovely time with your friends. Yeah,